To set the stage for implementing our first software project in this course, we need to cover a little bit of theory and some terminology that will prove valuable. We'll start with a simple problem and move on to more advanced ones as we progress. Let's say you accept a software development project in which you have to design an employee management system for a hospital. The requirements state that the software should support the ability to be able to hire or terminate employees and print employee reports. This preliminary requirement is called the problem statement. It's a big picture view of what needs to be delivered to the users of the system. Events in the hospital will take place such as hiring and firing of employees and as long as the users of our software accurately enter this information into the application, the application will mirror the current employment environment of the hospital. But before we even begin programming our first class, we need to think about design. And the best way to do this is to pull out a piece of paper or head out to a whiteboard or you can use uh, the UML software that I showed you earlier. It doesn't have to be in great detail, but you have to just be able to diagram enough so that you have a plan of action or an outline to begin uh, the implementation. In practice, many software developers skip this step entirely and jump straight to programming classes. This is a terrible idea. On the other hand, some programmers fall into the trap of over-designing or over-engineering a system up front that contains functionality that, although not needed now, may be useful in the future if requirements for such a component arise. This is a dangerous and wavy road full of potholes, dead ends, and, and wasted mileage. The objective should be to design a system somewhere in the middle of these two extremities, and it should be capable of changing or enhancing if required. Careful consideration must be taken from the start by planning a projected path of execution and having a clear understanding of the destination. The destination may change, the requirements may morph the system into something totally different than what was originally intended of the software at inception, but we need to develop iteratively and engage the business users every step of the way. The best thing to do at this early stage of design is to keep things simple. Creating simple diagrams and writing out scenarios can help in the design process. Although I'm not a big fan of elaborate and formalized software diagrams, I do believe there is value in understanding at least the major components of certain diagramming techniques, which we'll be visiting throughout the course uh, on an as-needed basis. Although employee management systems nowadays are far more advanced and far too many of them exist out there, I think the example we'll use is excellent for introducing the concepts that we'll build upon in later lessons. Let's think about the objects in our system. It seems like a nurse is an object in our application. There can be many nurses employed at the hospital. But what about doctors, receptionists, security guards, and cleaning staff? These are all potential employees in the hospital. So it only seems natural that we will need a class that represents employees. But what should be the name of that class? Here's an important rule of thumb. Class names should be nouns based after their intent. So far from what we know, this software will maintain several employee objects. So the name of the class should be employee. We may need other classes, of course, but let's start with this one since it seems to be somewhat obvious. Careful naming of classes and variables should be based on intent. In this example, we intend to create a class that represents an employee that works at the hospital. Notice that it would be a bad idea to name the class employees with an, with an S for plural because that doesn't coincide with our intent to represent an employee at the hospital. A class named employees with an S 
would actually be a container of multiple employee objects.